So I'm going to um, talk to the children. Um, we're continuing our series called In and Out. And today I want to talk about walking. Now, I wonder if you realise that we walk differently than we did 500 years ago. Do you realise that? We walk differently than we did 500 years ago. Now this is me walking. I want to show you another video of a, a group of little children walking and they're walking in a ballet class. Now this is called classical walks. And I want you to notice it. There's music in the background which you might be able to hear. That's not really necessary, but I want you to notice the way that they're walking. Do you notice the difference? I wonder if you can. Now you get the opportunity to see it slower now. And notice what's different about the way they're walking to the way we walk. There you go. Can anybody tell me what's the difference in the way they were walking to the way that we typically walk? Toe first. Sorry? The oh, the knee more bent. Yes, it's, it, and it's quite a to-do. They teach this classical walking in ballet class. It's very particular about the way they do it. Now, that's the way people used to walk 500 years ago. Do you know why? Why they walked that way? Well, this is why. Shoes. All right, modern shoes are hard, they often have a heel on them, but the thing about shoes is they protect your feet. Now, that's a modern shoe. Originally, shoes did not have that hard exterior at the bottom, the hard sole. It was soft, and that meant it did not protect the feet in the same way as our modern shoes do. And um, so if you were to take your shoes off, you would feel the floor, wouldn't you, under your feet? So the way people used to walk was to put the toe and the ball of the foot down first before they put their heel down. Why? In case there was something sharp? Or In case, yes, the ground is uneven or there's something sharp that's going to hurt your foot. So you actually don't put your weight on that foot until you're sure that it's safe and solid to do so. You see? And so people would walk like that. They'd put their toe down and then they'd put their weight on their foot. And then they'd do the same with the other foot. Toe down first and weight on the foot. And that's the way we originally used to walk. Very different. And it's also much slower than we walk. You would have noticed the speed that I was walking in that video. It looked very fast, but it was not any more quick than normal walking. I wasn't trying to walk quickly, it just looked it. And it looks fast because, again, I, because I don't need to feel the ground underneath me because the shoe protects my foot, I can do two things. I can put my heel down first and then move on um, and very quickly do the same again. Heel down first and then move on. So 500 years ago, people used to walk much more slowly and they would put their toe down first and then their weight on that foot when, it was, when they knew it was safe, you see? It's a very, very different way of walking. Um, now, one of the things we can do is um, a, a mindfulness meditation about walking. I wonder if anyone wants to come up and join me and have a go. And take your shoes off. No? <laughs> All right, so one of the things you can do in terms of a, just to centre yourself, it's like when we meditate, one of the things we can do is concentrate on our breathing. 
to meditate in, about walking, it's concentrating on the sensation of walking. And one of the things, of course, you can do is feel the ground under your feet as you go. And just slowly walking, not as quick as we do in modern day life, just feeling that ground underneath the soles of our feet. Okay, so that's something you can try if you're ever bothered and rushing around, just to very slowly walk and feel that sensation. And, and even the sensation of moving your, your legs as well is another thing that you can do. Play Parkle Bell's Cannon. Play Parkle Bell's Cannon? Yeah. When you walk? Oh, very, oh, I see, for a meditation. Yes, yeah, it slows you down. That's right. Music is very good at that. Very good at that. Now, I want to think about what walking means. What does walking mean? Here's some passages from the Bible. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So there's that idea of walking there in that psalm that we read right at the beginning of the service this morning. And then also in Genesis chapter 6, it talks about Noah. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. Now, does it mean he walked side by side with God walking alongside him? It doesn't mean that. It means that Noah lived a life which was in accord with God's commands. And that's what walking means. That's when we hear about walking in the word, this is what it's talking about. So when we walk, we are doing things that please the Lord. And the reason why walking means that is because our feet are in contact with the ground. Now look what we lose out on by wearing shoes. We forget the fact that our feet are in contact with the ground and they represent the physical things that we do that express our life. So we think about our head as being the centre of our thoughts and our feet are our daily actions. See, and that's what feet and walking mean. I've got one more slide to show you. Heaven is granted only to those who know the way to it and walk in that way. No one becomes an angel or comes into heaven except one who brings an angelic character with him from the world. Present in an angelic character, moreover, is a knowledge of the way from a walking in it and a walking in the way through a knowledge of it.